Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about generics in Java. It can be super confusing due to the various T's, angle brackets and question marks which are there in generics in the beginning. But by the end of this video, you will have some idea regarding what generics are and how to use them in your work. If you are new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon. So without any further delay, let's start. Let's see the kind of problems which developers had to face before the generics. So for that, let me start creating few classes. So I will click create one integer class. So what this class will do, this class will store an integer value and will have a function to print the same value. So in this video, I will be using IntelliJ IDE. <coughs> So this is the integer variable where the value will be stored. Now let's uh, generate the constructor. Just right click and go to generate. Here you will find an option of constructor. So here select the parameter which you want to create uh, constructor for and click OK. So we have this constructor ready. Now we need to create a function public void print. So this will not accept any argument, but it will just uh, try to print the value, whichever uh, value is stored in val variable. So there is another shortcut way to write system.out.println here. You, you just need to write S O U T and just press enter. Okay. <clears throat> now we need to just print the value of this dot val. So with this, we are ready with uh, our integer class where we can store the integer values and print the integer values now let me create a main class where i will be creating object of this integer class and print the value of integer let me call it main main class now to write a uh, main method itself i can write psvm so it's a kind of shortcut and then just print enter the intellij id will automatically create main method for you okay now let's create integer class object integer is equal to new integer class and i can pass the integer value 456 <clears throat> after that using the integer uh, object i can call it print method so now i'm expecting it should print 456 here let's try to execute the program and see the output so here you can see 456 is printed so that means our integer class is working fine. Now suppose what if we need to perform the exactly same set of operations that we have performed for this integer to a string as well. So what do we need to do? We need to create another class. So let's try to create another class. String class. Okay. <clears throat> Here we will do uh, everything same. Like uh, we will have a variable well of type string then we can generate its constructor using this generate option after that we just need to create a public void print method and this will do system.out.println this dot well this dot well okay so we are ready with a string class as well now let's go to main class and here i will be creating another object of string class string is equal to new string class and i can pass any string that i want to print let's pass hello there and after that using this string object i can call it print method let's try to execute the class and see the output <coughs> So here you can see hello there is printed so now you can see the problem here if we need to perform the steps for another type again we would need another class to do the same this will actually result into a lot of code duplication and whatever we have seen are the most basic classes and operations and it will be a lot messier if there are complex objects or custom objects which are involved so that is where generics come into picture it enables us to have a single class that can handle many different types. So let's create a generic class which can handle different types as well. So to do that, 
right click on the package create java class let me name it as generic class okay so its code will be almost similar to our previous classes but with the uh, introduction of generics itself now to use the generics we have to add a type parameter in the angle brackets right after the class name so here this is our class name and before the curly braces we need to add an angle bracket and here we can use the name of our type parameter so you might have already seen various uh, t's in angle brackets in java already so this is just a typical convention used in java but you can use anything you want you can use anything here itself it's a completely customizable thing but just to go with the uh, typical convention which is being used in java and get used to it let's try to use t here itself so t represents the type of objects which this generic class is going to hold and print earlier we have not mentioned anything here and whatever value we are defining it here uh, those values are getting stored and printed so as we are creating a generic class so we need to use this type variable so now we don't have to mention what type of variable uh, to be stored so we will mention t because that's our type parameter name should be val again now let's create a constructor for the same so constructor is also created now in the end just need to create a print method <coughs> And here also we don't need to mention anything specific it will just print this dot well I'm sorry <coughs> this dot well so now you can see we are ready with our generic print class here itself which can store any type of value and print that value as well now let's just try to test it in our main class itself now in my main class i need to create an object of generic class here itself i can define generic object one and again new generic object now here i can pass anything i can pass one two three it will be acceptable okay but here you can see it is giving me some kind of warning that raw use of parameterized generic class so here uh, java needs to know what type of objects we want to store uh, in the generic object this specific object so for that we will be using famous technique which you have already used multiple times in collection we will use angle brackets and here we will mention what type of data we want to store in generic object one so here you can see warning is gone from here but still we have warning here why because if we are trying to use generics we need to tell uh, in the new keyword as well what type of objects that we need to store uh, before java 7 you might have to write this complete integer as well but after java 7 you don't need to mention the type here you just need to add the angle brackets and it will work so now we have this generic object with us now let me call the print method using this and see the output so here you can see one two three is printed so now we have we are able to store and print the integer values using our generic class now let's try to store and print string as well using the same class okay now here we need to mention string generic object two new generic class and here hi there so i'm printing hi there in this and now using generic object 2 i'm calling its print method let's save and run it <coughs> so here you can see it is the same class is able to handle integer as well as string i can use it for long double or any other kind of type as well and also it can be used for any other custom classes like we have some employee class or some person class this class can also be used to store and print those classes as well one thing here to be noticed that generics will not work with the primitive types like small int 
a small long so for that we need to use the wrapper classes which are available in java like we have used integer here instead of int we can use uh, double with capital d if we want to do it for double so we just need to use the wrapper classes so that means it will generics will only work with objects now let's see a few examples where we have used generics very extensively which is collection framework suppose i want to have an array list of strings then i can use it like array list and here i need to mention the type i want to store so this is my list new array list so now i know that this is a list where i can store uh, elements of type string here i can add list dot add and here you can see it it allows me to add only string type of elements so i can add a list dot add sorry i need to use the small l because that is object name <coughs> dot b so here i am able to add string type of objects here but if i try to add some other type of objects in this let's see is if it is allowing me if i try to add an integer it is giving me an error it's that a required type is string and provided type is integer so it will not allow me to add any other type in that list because we have already specified only strings to be added in this list then one question can pop up in your mind that if we can create a list of objects which can store anything we want so yes that is possible where you can have such list that will work fine but then your code will not be type safe let's see with an example regarding what is type safe so let me create an array list of objects object <coughs> let's call it list to new array list okay so now here i can add anything i can add list to dot add a i can add string here then i can add list to dot add one two three any number here it will not give me an error it will work fine now let's try to get the first value here itself i know it's a string so let me create an object of type string well is equal to list to dot get zero so here you can see it has started giving me an error saying that uh, what it is returning is not actually matching uh, where we want to store it so required type is string but it is returned as object so how to fix that and the ide will also start giving you a few uh, options as well so we can cast it to string using this so now it will work this is known as type mismatch as java doesn't know that it is supposed to be a list of strings so we need to explicitly cast it to string but when we try to access the second element with the same logic it will give us a runtime error as we cannot be sure what type of element is stored in the second location these are the safety issues which are handled using generics as it will give us compilation error as we have seen uh, earlier like if i am using generics and uh, i want to <clears throat> i have mentioned already that only strings are uh, to be stored in this list and if i try to add something else it will give me a compilation error so uh, that's it for our first video in our next video we will cover some advanced topics related to generics so if you like the video please subscribe and share thanks for watching see you next time